and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Breen. We've tackled all the big stories over the summer, the Olympics, the credit crunch, and Carol Vorderman leaving Countdown. But as a special bonus, here are some of the rounds we didn't have time to fit into the original programmes, along with some of our favourite moments. Hope you enjoy it. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the spectacular opening to the Olympic Games. But what does B... GMC stand for. Is it British Gas Managers Celebrate? <laughs> is it British Games Much Crapper? <laughs> is, it, is it Bottled Gas Meat Cigarette? <laughs> I know this one actually. It's Barry George Merry Christmas. <laughs> is, is it Badger's Grenade Mouse Compound? <laughs> That's a very large mouse compound, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't know the mice were capable of that, and it's all gone to nothing because of the badger's attack. I didn't know the badgers were capable of that. That's appalling. They grenaded it. The thing is, this is, this is the thing is, Dara, you the... anger a badger, it will do anything. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a pensioner punch a badger in the face. Within seconds, no skin. The badger going and sourcing grenades is the bit I find particularly I'll be honest with you, it was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I'm now being held accountable for I'm something. Let me straight. You anger a badger to make it do anything? Because for years I've been playing them Barry White. And <laughs> <laughs> we once had a badger run over outside the house. You had him run over? No, what no, kind no. of okay. yeah, it was a badger. What kind of butler have you got? A badger. A badger have was... him run over yeah. for me. No. We shall sit in the throne and watch this. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're like the no, godfather no. of the yeah. vermin world. Yeah. A badger was run over outside the house and my parents were staying. And this badger obviously had to be killed, put down, to put it out of its pain. And all my father could find was a big stick. So he went outside and he had to hit the badger repeatedly with this big stick. And this is remembered by my son, because it was explained to him like this, as the time Grandad made the badger better with the stick. <laughs> Are you sure that's the badger, actually what's the what badger? happened? At the point, the badger has been run over. <laughs> and then this old guy comes up and tries yeah. to finish it off it with a horrible. stick. No, no, no. I did it. it freaks my dad out, actually, thinking about it. It's horrible. Your dad gets badger flashback. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just uh, big black and white and white and black and black and white. <laughs> <laughs> and then red. Black, white, red all over. Uh, turn off Wind in the Willows. Turn off yeah. Wind in the Willows. <laughs> Are you sure it's not barbecues gone massively cock-eyed? <laughs> yeah. Surely. Yes, it's a it was in a Chinese paper. It's actually... That's fine now, is it? Yeah. It's just sort of saying, yeah, no, Chinese yeah. sounds a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> now China's got an economy, the racism's all allowed again. <laughs> is it properly? Beijing Games, most costly, I would have thought. Yes, it is. Very good. Well done, you, Jack. Yes, the answer I was looking for was Beijing Games most costly. This is the news that the Beijing Olympics costs are expected to exceed £20 billion, making the most expensive in history. The opening ceremony is watched by 91,000 spectators and dozens of world leaders in the Olympic Stadium. Is there really a purpose to having an Olympic opening ceremony? It's not like I would have switched on the telly today and seen people jumping into sand pits and going, What the hell is this? <laughs> Hollyoaks has changed. <laughs> I didn't, even really? like, I didn't even like the opening ceremony, man. How can you not have liked the opening People ceremony? People in tracksuits and explosions. I had the flashback to living in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we've given ourselves a target of 42 medals, why don't we just say, oh, we're hoping to get one medal and not have the pressure on ourselves? If we get any more, it'll be a bit I of think, a bonus. I think that has something to do with the fact that we've spent 235 million quid I've... and the feeling that that's a lot of money for, say, one bronze medal. <laughs> what, what we said Actually, <laughs> Bronze wholesale is relatively cheap. You can get much more than one medal's worth for 235 million quid. That's what's, what's great about watching the Olympics is how quickly you become an expert in something that you know nothing about. Yeah. Right? I genuinely found myself shouting at the shooting. <laughs> Just hit the targets in the early rounds. <laughs> you can't win it in the qualifiers, but you can lose it. <laughs> What did I mean by that? <laughs> it's like the beam. The beam's the one when you see the, uh, the freaky little girls just doing all that kind of spinny stuff. When one of them falls off, you're like, oh, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> just go easy. And then you, but you know, if, if I had those abilities they've got to flip on, I would not be able to do it. I've been like Asda, just triple spinning like that, just to freak people out. So you don't ask the question, how can they do that? But how can they stop? Absolutely. Yeah. Think about that. If, yeah. you, if you could flip five times, you would do that down the aisle of a supermarket, would you not? I can and don't. <laughs> The answer is one million percent. What is the question? Is it, uh, what is the blood alcohol content of Amy Winehouse? <laughs> is it, after a recent power surge, what did Stephen Hawking say over and over again <laughs> for three days? How much does Max Mosley's blood pressure go up when he smells leather? 
Is it what increase in population will Kerry Katona be responsible for <laughs> by the time her womb finally succumbs to the ravages of time and chicken drumsticks? <laughs> How much did exaggerations go up last year? <laughs> is the real answer what is the rate of inflation in Zimbabwe? Yes, it is actually, yes. Got a very good Lucy Porter there. Yes, this is the question I was looking for, is what is the estimated current inflation rate in Zimbabwe? This is the escalating economic disaster under Robert Mugabe's regime, with prices doubling every hour. Many Zimbabweans are now unable to afford even the most basic supply. You wouldn't spend too long browsing in a Zimbabwean shop, would you? <laughs> Do you know that they did a survey this week said that Zimbabwean people are the least contented people in the world? <laughs> Just no pleasing some people. <laughs> they had an election, they had loads of money. What do you want, for God's sake? They had an election say? that was so corrupt that second place actually went to Anton Deck. <laughs> To be fair, though, I mean, people give him a hard time, but he actually, you know, he ran a good campaign. He had a good slogan, vote for me and I won't kill you. <laughs> and uh, he, he was very good on Zimbabwean question time. That's a good question. Have him taken away and killed. <laughs> I do genuinely, um, like Frankie says, as, as, you know, in the international community, are just sort of making these symbolic gestures, uh, say the EU, say they won't uh, recognise the legitimacy of his government, but that is irrelevant. He continues. It's a nonsense. It's, it's, there's no reality in that gesture. It's like taking away Joseph Fritzl's Dad of the Year mug. It's really... Yeah. It, it, it's completely meaningless. And then our big solution to this, as a government, as a nation, as a force, Gordon Brown meets with Cobra to decide, it's the big one, we need to remove cricket, we won't play with cricket. Like, that, like this is going to, you know, tame criminals, like you're going to have people being sent down for murder and rape, two years no cricket, suspended yeah. no scrabble, it's a complete nonsense. No French cricket, no cricket of any time. Like Mugabe's going to react to that. Like he's going to go, I will remove myself from government, I already have 2020 tickets, I cannot... <laughs> Why are you being so harsh with this nation? It's nonsense. <laughs> that was an incredible impression. <laughs> I just want to say... Can I just say, with that le level of impressionistic ability, <laughs> you're going to fit right in on this show. <laughs> Gordon Brown, why you take away my cricket? <laughs> <laughs> Did, did Mugabe, did, did, well, he, okay, let me give a hint. He doesn't speak as if he's going to turn and play something on the steel drum for time. <laughs> he does. It, it went dun, dun, to dun, the West dun, 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 <laughs> Election and thing. What did they tally up the votes? <laughs> they are going to tally the banana. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never really heard him speak. Have you heard him speak? What, so you just made up whatever <laughs> accent you felt like? Yeah. Why didn't you give him like a Dutch? Give him a Dutch accent or something. Make that give him like a dog. I'd alternatively like to do my impression of Morgan's finger eye. Did you see though that he'd apparently gone into hiding in the Dutch embassy? Now, if they know where he is, surely he hasn't gone into hiding. You didn't go. Oh, let's play hide and seek. You count to ten, and when you open your eyes, I'm in that tree over there. Let's be honest, of all the places you're going to hide, once the Colombian embassy are too paranoid to open the door, second place is obviously the Dutch embassy, who are always willing to let anybody in in case they have pizza. Just, <laughs> come on in, man, party time, what's going on out there? That's a Dutch accent. That's great. Very good accent. I can't tell the difference between the two. <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask Hugh to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the Prince of Wales. Ah, oh, good afternoon, Your Highness. Oh, we're wearing the same thing. How terribly embarrassing. <laughs> uh, I didn't know you had a kilt. Well, we didn't have a kilt. It was uh, the, the inquest. <laughs> oh, look, someone's been sick. Has uh, Harry been in? Uh, where is your luggage, Your Highness? Oh, good. That's my uh, cheese for the journey. It's, it's, <laughs> that's not your cheese, you fool. That's my makeup. Are you sure? We need a lot more than that. The uh, train's uh, just about ready to go, so uh, you saw that wasn't my cheese. I'm bloody hungry. Anyway, don't want to keep anyone waiting. I uh, wish my mother felt the same. <laughs> here's, a, here's a good one for you. How do you tell what clan a Scotsman is? You put your hand up his kilt, and if he's got a quarter pounder, then uh, he's a MacDonald. <laughs> well, uh, this is your compartment, Your Highness. Right. Why is it padded? Your mother, your mother told us you're a dangerous lunatic. Right. Do you have any cheese? Uh, big bit? Uh, that be... Uh, well, that was lovely, I think. It's uh, very good. Only one uh, problem. Doesn't seem to have an engine. Uh, <laughs> would, would, could it be up there? Uh, why would it be up there, you old trout? You don't have an engine on the... You don't have an engine up there, do you? Well, the engine on the top... No, we don't keep the engine on the top of the train. The engine is generally at the front or the back of the train. Yes. Well, that's what I thought. It's, uh, I just wondered... Well, don't. Uh, oh, hello there. Do you have any cheese? Uh, I, I just want some cheese. Uh, 
anyway, while they're um, getting me some cheese and the train is waiting for an engine, I, uh, I thought I'd just tell you a few uh, one-liners. Uh, uh, my mother is so well, um, I might never be king. Uh, knock, knock. I'll, I'll send a footman to see who's there. Uh, they call me the Prince of Wales, but I'm thinking of changing my name to the uh, Dog and Duck. Uh, oh, you like that? It's very good. Uh, my ex-wife... Uh, was only unfaithful to me on two occasions, the uh, 1980s and uh, the 1990s. Uh, my God, you're a fucking hard audience. Anyway. Uh, well done, you. The answer is £100 a day. What is the question? Is it according to the sun, how much does the average beggar make a day? <laughs> You're no. ruining by saying a day when it's already got a day in the answer. <laughs> 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 is it? Let me just let me have another crack at that. Your repetition one. of a day. Ed, is Ed, it? Like say it without a day, and I watch. What's up? Well, I was just about to. Ed's turned into like the Microsoft paperclip. He's trying to write his letter. You're doing it wrong. Are you doing a lift? <laughs> According to the Sun, right, what does a beggar earn? <laughs> But well, we are apparently in the middle of a countryside <laughs> crime wave. Have you seen this? If I lived in a country, I'd be delighted if someone did a crime because I'd be bored out of my mind. <laughs> Thank God you've turned up with a shotgun to steal my rhubarb. Could you kill me on the way out? <laughs> Some bloke stole rhubarb from an allotment. You can actually tag it. Just well, imagine, tag it. imagine the phone call. Just some deranged. They've taken it. It's gone. <laughs> My prize winning marrow. Is there no god? You have. Surely you, you have to just put so- rhubarb down his sleeves well, and then I go. Have. <laughs> I've been there. Mate, what, you can't. You can't ever feel sorry for the. That's the lowest rung but, of criminality, but, isn't but it? Have they, they, have they, have they, just. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself here. Oh, no, 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 Vintage Mock of the Week. He brought up the subject just so someone else could do a joke on it. Surely he might have been working towards a punchline. You (laughs) ignorant. (laughs) Jesus. I I think the workers are going to hire a chair for the joke umpire. I have a feeling the Microsoft paperclip's taking some cocaine. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's a great little animation of the paperclip. <laughs> good, yes. That's a really good letter. The point I was going to make is, um, surely, right, <laughs> fellas, but surely, if you're a bank robber, you're sexy, you're dangerous, you can get diamonds for your lover. If you're still from allotments, what hope have you got, you know? You've got dirt underneath your fingernails, all you have to offer is broccoli. You know? <laughs> well, a woman who's going to have sex for broccoli is going to be dotty. <laughs> One of the reasons they were trying to (laughs) split that be. Hang on, sorry to interrupt you, Andy, but wouldn't that be the. (laughs) the, the, (laughs) Oh, way! Way! (laughs) (laughs) Frankly, I I, I wish to go on the record and say I have now lost control. Now we play a game called What on Earth? What on Earth do you say? I've never seen this round before. Why would they introduce a brand new game on show 11 of an 11-week series? No, we're going to do it. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I show the panel a topical image from somewhere in the world and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, teens, who on Earth is this? Looks a bit like Peter Kay. <laughs> is he, is, he's a crazy billionaire who's bought Man City. Yeah, he is, yeah, Does no crazy billionaire build a secret base and kill James Bond anymore? <laughs> what are you going to do, Bond? I am buying Frank Lampard legally. <laughs> I think it's going to be great for Man City. I can't wait to hear their team sheet being read out at 5am from the top of a mosque. <laughs> Ronaldinho is injured. Yes, he is injured! <laughs> All this money they're spending on Manchester City, the, the team just better not play like Shiite. <laughs> I'm new in town. But it's a play thing to these guys, man, right? In, in two years' time, Manchester City will be 3 0 up in the Champions League final, <laughs> and this guy will just turn to his assistant and go, I am bored now, build me a robot spaniel. <laughs> I love them. Man City. The, my favourite story about Man City, without doubt, is that they wanted to name one of their stands after a famous player called Colin Bell. So they genuinely wanted a stand called Bell End. You have to, oh, that's that fantastic. is genius, isn't it? If you've got 135 million, don't buy Ronaldo. You could use that money to have all the good players and the other teams killed. Yeah. The, the end of the transfer window should be like the final scenes in The Godfather, where like Joe Cole just sitting in a sauna while someone strangles him with a towel. <laughs> We have no love for our national team, and they clearly don't care. When you see them play, what we should do is just really up the ante and just have, like, Fabio Capello there with a lion, just like that. Go, yeah, oh, are you going to run? <laughs> yeah, you're going to run, aren't you? You're going to really run. It's going to matter for wanting your... Oh, there you go. I, I can't hold him. I can't hold him. Oh, my arms are getting tired, Wayne. My arms are getting tired. It would actually be scarier if he just did it naked with an imaginary line. <laughs> 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 the lion 
totally honest. You know, do you know those leads you get for an invisible dog, right? Which is just like a straight lead with a hoop at the end. And he's going, oh, there was a lion. There was a lion. What a moment that would be a match of the day. Just like that, just Capello like that. Bullet naked going, whoa. England, England desperately trying to get every game to go into extra time. Yeah, just lose one. He's naked again. <laughs> It's never been, it's never oh, been tried, The substitutes are stripping off. No, 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 they're not. It's actually Capella. <laughs> Capella's stripping off again. Oh, no, he's got his menagerie out again. Oh, oh the giraffe is time, huh? <laughs> Joe Cole, it's the hawk for you! <laughs> the hawk for your Cole! <laughs> Whose number is up this week? It's, it's Carol Vorderman. It is, of course, Carol <laughs> yeah. Vorderman. Yeah, she, Cow. Yeah, basically, she got paid £900,000 a year. The people that won Countdown got a T-shirt and a dictionary. <laughs> That's true. And she's only there because people find, old people find it comforting to see the same face. Like, I think, should they be comforted? I'd like to see the person picking the letters dressed up as death. <laughs> I'd like her to have stayed on, but just in a sort of couldn't care less half-hearted Yeah, yeah, yeah you've yeah. got to get 10000 with a 5, a 7... And um, <laughs> why did she just be shuffling around in a dressing gown, just swigging <laughs> yeah. from a can? She imagines, she imagines she's indispensable. Oh, they'll never be able to find a younger woman who can use a calculator. <laughs> can I just say that I once got into a lift with Carol Vorderman, absolutely hilariously. I got into a lift, Vorderman was already in the lift, and she was, in, she was at the numbers. And she was actually yeah. at the numbers in the lift, and she looked at me as if to say, I'm in control of these numbers. Uh, where do you want to go? And I think if you can't make a joke at this yeah. moment in life, you're in real trouble. So I just went, I'll have one from the top and five from anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and you got trapped in a lift. <laughs> do you, you know who I was really panicking now? Because Des is gone and now Carol's gone. I reckon Dictionary Corner are shitting themselves. <laughs> do you think they're unionised? I think they'll be very pleased to be unionised because it's in fact a nine-letter word. Yeah. <laughs> it was... Yeah. That's quite yeah. good. That's really good. Right. Yeah, right. The next round is called Between the Lines and features Hugh and Greg. Would you make your way to the press pit, please? Greg delivers a speech in the guise of a leading figure on the world stage while Hugh translates what they really mean. <clears throat> Greg, you're American presidential candidate Barack Obama. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to attempt to emulate my political heroes. Luther, Kennedy, Martin Luther King. <laughs> Martin Luther King, what's wrong with no, no, Martin Luther King is fine, it was Luther. I love the idea of your brain just going, I can offer you the word tangerine, that is it. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to attempt to emulate my political heroes. Lincoln, Kennedy, Luther King. I'm going to be assassinated. <laughs> Hillary is a wonderful politician, and I'm delighted to have her continued support. Loser! Loser! <laughs> George Bush has been giving me some tips. He still thinks I'm the valet who parks his car. <laughs> I have the greatest of respect for all of Senator McCain's achievements. Hmm... Oven chips. <laughs> I will, of course. It, uh, I'm sorry, I'm starting to sound like some sort of soul singer now. <laughs> yeah, we got it together, didn't we, babe? <laughs> um, there's just a small note from the Fucking desk that I get into my ear. Um, Frankie, uh, Hugh, uh, they're just a, a tiny, just a tiny editorial, just tweak. If, you know, if we could have stuff which we actually can broadcast. Uh, like... Nobody mentioned that. They have been slagging off. Oh, cramp, man. It's just... <laughs> put, put it in, just... <laughs> Sorry, I was you really... You a sports yeah. injury in the first 20 minutes of the show. Sorry. Morris, dance it off, Russell. Yeah, I can't, man. <laughs> You've got to lie down. Oh, the 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 <laughs> get down, get down! I'm not going to cry! I'm not going to cry! I'm not gonna cry. Got, I hope got, somebody's you... videoing this for a gay website. <laughs> Oh, I was, I was yeah. so which bit, so yeah. really just telling that the, uh, that the two guests in the show yeah. ran to help while the regulars yeah, all sat there <laughs> on our fat holes uh, going, ah, he'll bounce back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was a fly. There wasn't a fly. There genuinely, well, there was a... Yeah. Did you catch it? No, I didn't. What am I, a fucking karate kid or something? No, I didn't catch it. <laughs> Is it, oh. in the last oh. round of Mock the Week, scenes we'd like to see, how many goes am I going to get to go before... To go? To go. <laughs> Before Russell interrupts me because I've mispronounced what I was trying to say. <laughs> the way you three, are, particularly like that, they look like the evolution of man. They could be walking like that. We'll have to turn that way. <laughs> Saying, weren't they, that Hurricane Katrina was down to, I'll start that again, 
Yeah. Don't say that. Goo. I've got goo all over my face. What? Not the first time either. Don't say that, mate. Do you think I look like Pierce Brosnan with a mouthful of sweets? At the end of that round... Oh, OK, sorry, I'll do it without slouching quite as much. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> at the end of the round, I'm bring me more. Uh, <laughs> you should do that even in your shot, right? You just serve it. In a vest, like, like a fat Marlon Brando at the end of his career. Just, what? Oh, yeah, points for <laughs> Russell. Uh, and then back. As this is the last week, let's just have you with, like, a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> <laughs> OK. The next topic is things you didn't hear at the Olympics. I am the little girl from the opening ceremony. This is my real voice. (laughs) That gymnast is so supple. If my wife could do that, we'd still be together. (laughs) Chinese athlete with number 36 in his chest. That means he's a chicken chow man. (laughs) And it's gold for Ireland. Well, that'll be low marks for synchronicity, but high marks for execution. Clean shot to the head, backwards off the board, pool full of blood, magnificent. (laughs) Next, over to Gabby Logan, who's going to tell us whether or not she's a transvestite. (laughs) And... And (laughs) Go on, go again, man, go again. (laughs) Do it, do it, do it. And (laughs) I'm not letting you off for the last Ireland joke. You're not getting on again for the rest of the show. You are not doing another one for the rest of the show, all right? Uh, You've just been... Oh, let's look at the clock. It's more interesting than the show jumping. (laughs) The one thing we're all thinking during the Olympics, doesn't Claire Balding look like Eddie Izzard? (laughs) Nobody can touch this Russian gymnast, except their coach and their uncle. (laughs) And here comes... (laughs) (laughs) Well, what a morning. We've got medals in the Yingling, Yingling, Tiddly and Po. <laughs> Next, the rhythmic gymnastics. You might want to start beating out your own rhythm at home. <laughs> and here... <laughs> and uh, the French have four faults. Their language, their food, their underarm hair and the fact that they are French. <laughs> A surprise in the canoeing where the British athlete has gone missing. (laughs) It was after I heard the buzzer (laughs) that I realised one thing I hadn't heard at the Olympics was fuck it. (laughs) The next topic is things that would change the atmosphere at a dinner party. Ignore the banging. She's been in there for 24 years. Help yourself to Nibbles. He was our favourite hamster, but it's what he would have wanted. Are you sure this is pork? Because just because Mike Crackling has a tattoo. <laughs> don't worry, we don't say grace. We just sacrifice a child to the great god Imhotep. <laughs> Doorbell. Excellent. That'll be Heather Mills and James Blunt. Opie's brought his guitar. <laughs> I hope nobody's allergic to nuts, because I like to rest mine on the table. Well, this is absolutely lovely. I say we all raise a glass to the floor! (laughs) Ten of you arrived. Only one will leave. (laughs) Anyway, long story short, after about two hours, you couldn't tell what was poo and what was chocolate. (laughs) There is a vegetarian option. You can fuck off. 